This is the Real Estate Investing Abundance Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Allen. I know you're excited to get into today's show, but I have a very exciting announcement to share with you before moving to the show. We've just launched a complimentary and comprehensive webinar that, among other things, shows you how to legally use passive real estate investing to reduce your taxes, recession-proof your nest egg, and take the sting out of inflation. If you are curious to learn more, go to steetalker.com forward slash webinar. It is complimentary and only takes a couple of minutes of your time. Once again, that is steetalker.com forward slash webinar. I'll see you in the webinar. Enjoy today's show. Hello, enlightened investors. Welcome back to Real Estate Investing Abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Allen, and I'm delighted to be with you today as we are going to look into the ins and the outs of real estate financing, which is a huge and enormous topic, but we are going to glean some very meaningful insights from Brittany Fairweather, who is the Chief Business Development Officer at TRX Capital, a real estate lending firm focused on business purpose lending. Brittany manages overall growth, strategy, and client-facing communications at the firm, and she has extensive experience in residential loan origination, investor relations, fund management, sales, and business development. So, Brittany, share a memorable experience that helped to form who you are. Uh, a big question. <laughs> thank you for having I'm me. I'm sure I there's lots it. of things there. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to sharing any insights and information that I can um, with uh, with your listeners. The let's see something formative, something memory memory from my formative years. I would say. I remember the first time I, um, I guess it's a little bit later than in my formative years, but early in my career, I remember the first time I uh, spoke on a panel at a conference. And I remember being so incredibly nervous. And part of the reason I was nervous is because one of my, just someone that I look up to so much in our space was on the panel with me. So not only was it my first panel, but I had this, you know, huge personality in, in my perspective, from my perspective that was there with me. And I was chatting with him before we went on stage. And what he said to me was just talk to the people like you're having a conversation with me and don't let the audience get in the way of your message. And don't let the fear of the audience get in the way of your message. And that for me was huge because it made me really understand that you can just have a open, candid conversation and kind of let some of those walls down. And uh, for me, that was that was pretty formative and, and big memory and moment for me in my career in this industry specifically. I guess it's not really something childhood, something formative that shapes who I am, but it definitely shapes how I how I view. Uh, my role in our company, in our business, in our industry as, you know, educational and just being able to share content and have conversations and um, be a resource. So yeah, genuineness and honesty go a long ways. And, uh, and I think that's the lesson that you, that your mentor was telling you at that yes. point in time. Yeah. How did you get started in real estate? So it's funny. That's a funny question for you to ask. I was, we were at a conference this past week. It's one of the biggest conferences in our, in our space for um, single family rental investments. And, and we were having a conversation uh, similar and we were just talking about all, everyone's different kind of diverse backgrounds. And I think people in my, in my role, at least in my space in this industry, we're kind of the Island of misfit toys because mm -hmm. we all have these uh, these unique, weird backgrounds, and none of us actually ended, you know, intended to end up in real estate finance. Uh, so we're all, you know, defunct musicians and artists and athletes. And so it's it's just funny to hear everyone's backgrounds. But for me, I was a musical theater major. I had no intention of of being in real estate. But my mentor, my uh, one you know, person who's guided me and I've been able to, so I've been so fortunate to be able to be coached and 
um, work alongside with gave me an opportunity. Um, I met her actually when I was 14 years old and I needed to buy a dress for prom. And so I went um, across the street to a, to a business and I needed to, you know, I was going to sell myself on why they should hire me my very first job when I was 14. And she said, well, the company isn't open yet, but you know, there's a phone and there's a phone book. Go ahead and start with the A's and see how many people you can reach. So legitimately, my first job was cold calling from a phone book. But fast forward after uh, after college and going through, you know, my career in musical theater, my desire to have a career in musical theater, I ended up reconnecting with her. And I worked with her throughout college. And she had started a real estate brokerage. And she said kind of the same thing. Get on in here and see if you can roll up your sleeves and learn. We're looking for someone to to figure out how to help us kind of grow the brokerage in the office and here's a chance. So that's how I got started in real estate. (laughs) That's interesting. So many people I talked to have started out with cold calling. And frankly, I don't know how you survived it. I don't know how any of you survive it. (laughs) It gives you thick skin. (laughs) Uh, yes, I guess I guess it would. Uh, well, I'm sure it would. Not a, a very desirable thing to do and not something I certainly want to think about doing. How do we use leverage to build wealth? It's something that's near and dear to my heart right now at this point in my career. I have younger siblings. I have um, folks that I feel like really don't have access to the tools that I was given access to, to educate themselves on what is available to them. What's, what's out there for them. You know, you don't have to be a multi-billion dollar hedge fund to be able to have an investment portfolio. You don't have to be someone who's incredibly experienced in the, the industry and the space to be able to learn how to use the availability of leverage to build a portfolio of real estate assets. You don't have to have a lot of money to get started either. You can get started with a small nest egg. And that's something that I really want to, um, has been, like I said, near and dear to my heart lately on, on how to educate people that don't, don't really have access to that information. And I think what's really important to know is that you can start small. And if you have a small savings, you can obtain a business purpose loan for investing in real estate. And you only need to have really 20% down to be able to get started. And you can take that, say, whatever that amount is, $50,000, whatever it is that you have to kind of get started in the business. And you could, as opposed to buying one property with that small amount that you have, when you obtain leverage, when you get real estate financing associated with your purchase and you close with purchase funds um, with a private money lender that's not an institutional bank, that's not going to go look at tax returns and W-2s and all of the things that people most commonly associate with obtaining a mortgage, you can buy two, maybe three properties. And then you can look at when you're when you're using business purpose financing, the lender we as the lender will look at the cash flow of that property as opposed to the cash flow that you have as an individual or the income that you have as an individual. And I think the different way that lenders look at business purpose loans is something that most people don't really understand. They don't really have the information available to them to look at those two different scenarios. I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing that I can share and impart on people that are getting into investment Getting into real estate for the first time, you don't have to have a lot because you can leverage the private financial institutions like TRX Capital to be able to help you buy more than just one, two, three properties. And then you can build a little nest egg and you can start receiving the cash flow on that. And then you can use those properties when the value appreciates to refinance, pull some of that equity out, buy more properties, and you can continue that cycle. If you buy one property every year, with purchase financing from a private money lender, you would build a nice little nest egg there, a nice little real estate portfolio that you would just collect cash flow on and doesn't take a lot to be a landlord, doesn't take, you don't have to have a bunch of big wins. I think that's the misconception too, is people think that you get into real estate to get rich quick. You don't have to have a bunch of big wins, just growing small, methodically, systematically, and with the right partners that can educate you, 
is is available. Yeah. So I think I'm hearing you in this in that leverage isn't just money that you can leverage your talents, your gifts, and your abilities, and you can leverage your connections. And then also, of course, there's leveraging the whatever money it is that you have. Well, Brittany, right. take us through uh, just so we can get a clearer understanding here of what you're talking about, a business uh, purpose loan. Just give us an example of a business purpose loan that your company has originated? So we have, uh, let's say I have a, um, a local investor who's near and dear to my heart. It's a young guy who got started early in the business and he has secured financing um, through a business purpose loan. So what we do is we look at the profitability of his project. We look at the experience of his team we look at the the total hold time for what he's trying to accomplish and then make sure that we're comfortable with all of those things combined so that that, that whole puzzle mixed together, when you put all those pieces together, that the deal is profitable, that you have significant, uh, significant return, and that when you complete your project, you are uh, going to be in a positive cash flow position. Mm -hmm. So... The difference in obtaining a business purpose loan to a conventional mortgage is a little is what I shared a little bit earlier. So we're going to look at the fact that you have a business entity. We're not going to tie personal assets. We're not going to look at personal income. We are going to really look at the value of that particular property as it were a business. We're going to look at the profitability. And what we do then is we, for this particular client, so we helped him acquire the property. He had his 20% down. So he put 20% down into the property. We gave him the additional 80% of that purchase price. And then we also were able to finance for him the renovation. So one thing that you're able to do with a business purpose loan is we understand what it takes for contractors to do renovations on properties. So we will actually also provide the financing in the form of reimbursement to renovate the project. So you'll be able to get uh, our team to view the project scope to make sure that it is, it's in line, that the general contractor that you're working with uh, is not gouging you on some hidden fees or, you know, materials costing more than they should, things like that. So we're underwriting that. So you can think of our team as a backstop, as an additional tool uh, that you have to make sure that you're getting a good deal from your contractor, from your real estate agent, who's going to sell the property for you if you're going to flip it. So by using a business purpose loan, you get all of those additional resources. And then what we also look at is the profitability on the end of that. And we determine, you know, what that property is going to rent for uh, when you are complete um, with the renovation and you are ready to put a long-term, you know, tenant in your, in your investment. So we look at all those things combined together and we're able to then refinance out of the construction loan, our initial business purpose construction loan into some long-term financing. 30 year mortgage, you know, you have strong cash flow, make sure that the property is going to pay for itself, essentially. Um, and by looking at all of those components, uh, we're able to help this particular client who just got started a couple of years ago. Um, and we're doing, you know, probably one, two deals a month for him now. His goal was to own 30 properties by the time he was 30 years old, and he'll get there. Enlightened investors, if you haven't done so already, be sure and click that like button and also click that share so others can take advantage of the content. And finally, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of our upcoming episodes. Brittany, uh, share with our audience what you offer in terms of your business, how they can get in touch with you to take advantage of that. So we are, uh, you know, our primary business is making real estate loans for real estate investors, new, experienced, and every level in between. So we offer acquisition financing, we offer construction financing, and we offer the long-term financing for rental properties as well. Like I said a little bit earlier, you know, we really look at the whole package and we're double checking everything every step of the way 
And one of the reasons I believe that we've been successful in this industry for 15 plus years as a team is because our investors and our clients and borrowers know that they can use us as a backstop. We'll tell them if we think their deal isn't quite right, if we think the margins are slim. And so that's what we do. We we really try to think of ourselves as partners for our clients and we help build their wealth, their company's wealth. And we review everything pretty quickly. Uh, generally, I like to give a 24 hour turn time to do an initial review on a scenario. I have my account manager that I work with uh, here in my office. We look at everything together and kind of let let the um, prospective investor know what rate, what terms, what the total cost is going to be. And we have a pretty good project review that we can share um, on how the capital, the cost of the capital plays into the profitability and how that you know ultimately increases your cash on cash return um, as opposed to just the over prof- overall profitability of your scenario. So okay, everything is done through good old fashioned phone calls, emails. I like to walk properties with my clients. I like to go out there and see them and feel what they feel and get an idea for what they're trying to do. Comprehensive package there. So how did they get in touch with you? So you can call me anytime Um, I'm available. My cell phone number is 310-569-4275. My phone is always on to the de- sometimes to the detriment of my family, unfortunately, but they understand. Um, and email, I can always get back to everyone very quickly on email, um, or you know, one someone from our team can. And you can reach me at Brittany B R I T T N E Y at T R X Cap Fund dot com. And all that information is, of course, in our show notes. Brittany, you have succeeded in a male-dominated industry. How, as a woman, have you found your path and your way in this industry? I have been very fortunate um, in that I have been, uh, you know, my the companies I've been a part of um, have been led at the helm by a incredible entrepreneurial woman, and so I have a very, very, very strong influence and role model and mentor to look up to. But a lot of it is, you know, learning how to hold your own. I feel like we as women are generally viewed as support. Um, We're generally viewed as working for someone else. Someone asks me at the last conference that I went to that I hadn't met yet. So who do you work for? I work for myself. Thank you very much. (laughs) And that seems to be the perception across the board. And so where we struggle as women is how to run in the good old boys club, how to talk the good old boys talk, but maintain a level of respect that keeps us always above board, always with beyond reproach. And that is a very important lesson that I teach, that I learned, and that I impart on any woman that comes into this business with me, alongside me, anywhere in, you know, my purview is is be above, be beyond reproach. Your reputation is built on how you carry yourself, but at the same time, being able to, you know, joke with the boys and have a laugh and run in that circle. Um, so it's, it's difficult, but when you can, when you can navigate that successfully, it's actually very rewarding because some of the greatest friends that I have built in this business, I affectionately call my big brothers because we're on the road together. We're at conferences together. And once you get to the point where they respect you and your reputation and what you've done and what you've built, then they just kind of bring you under their wing and treat you like a little sister. (laughs) Well, you are also a mother, not just a woman, but you're also a mother. Um, How do you harmonize uh, business and motherhood? So I have four children. My oldest is 13 and my youngest is one. So we are in all different phases of parenting. 
And I am fortunate in that I um, frequently work from home. They hear my conversations. They know who I'm talking to on the phone. They know who my clients are. They know who my team is. They know who my partners are. And I think they benefit. I think my children benefit from being exposed to that drive and that uh, dedication. And if I didn't have them, I would have a hard time disconnecting. I would have a hard time not being 100% on all the time. And so I think that as a mother, they ground me and they help me to slow down and they keep me um, in check, you know, when it's time to slow down and have dinner. And we have a lot of conversations about what's important to them, what parts of their day are important for mom to be involved in, what parts of their day do they want me to be focused. And they, they keep me in check. Let me tell you, they're like, mom, put your phone down or you're not listening to me. And we have a lot of conversations about it. And I think that's really important. And I think that also fosters not only communication in our household, but trust and confidence for them to be able to know they can, they can call me out and they can say, Hey, listen to me. They're going to, I feel like it's going to help them grow up to be stronger, more confident, resilient individuals as a whole. So develop their, it's a lot of checks and balances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are you revolutionizing uh, the lending industry uh, with uh, TRX Capital? You've given us some idea as to the comprehensiveness of the business, but go into a little bit more depth in terms of how you're revolutionizing this. So it's interesting. Revolutionizing is an interesting term. I feel like the industry the world as a whole, our, our society as a whole is so focused on how technology can enhance your business, how technology can improve your ROIs or uh, improve your business process. But we at TRX kind of see it a little bit backwards, I suppose, because we understand and truly value the personalized approach to our business. Something that technology and all the revolutionary revolutionary advancements cannot take away. Cannot take away the personal one-on-one touch. And I think that is very unique for us. And I would say that's how we are as a company not revolutionizing the industry, but almost taking us back a step and saying, yes, these things are important. Technology is important. Making uh, enhancement to business process is important. Automating, underwriting can be important, but you will never be able to take away the value of a personalized approach. And that's ultimately why we started TRX. We didn't intend to be lenders again. It's not, it wasn't something that was like, oh yes, let's get back into this again. We sold companies and we've done this before and we're going to do it again. But we saw a need for it. We saw a need for someone, uh, a lender, a capital partner, a debt partner, who not only will answer the phone when you when you call, will pick up and be there, will meet you on site, but will but will do every single step of the financing process with you, whether that be finding capital for equity, financing acquisitions, financing construction, new construction, renovations, all the way through to the long-term financing. And that component is something that we believe is unique to our team and our company. And that combined with maintaining a very hands-on approach with our clients and bringing in technological advancements where advancements where they are applicable and important. Uh, that's where I think that we are, we stand above the competition mm-hmm. and where we are unique in the space. So I wouldn't say we're necessarily revolutionizing the industry, but we are definitely, we're definitely uh, setting the standard for what we feel like the experience should be. Well, I, I mean, I do see a revolutionary aspect in that, that you are taking, I mean, I don't, I, I don't really know that I know of any other lender who goes from the initial purchase through to the 
to the long-term 30-year financing. I, I mean, I suppose there's others out there, but I don't know of any who do that. So I think that's pretty revolutionary uh, in and of itself there. And on top of what you just mentioned, the personalized service that you offer is, it just, just from talking to you, it just seems much more genuine and real than, than a lot of other private lenders that I have had Thank the, you. the privilege to talk to. So uh, yes, take us through your, this is our last question. We're running out of time here, but your journey from real estate investor and business owner to actually being the founder of uh, TRX? So I think it was just, it's been a culmination of a long, a long journey, really sitting in every seat. We walked every single step of what we, of what we do for our clients. We've been in their shoes. And that really is why uh, we founded TRX and how we got here is we did the hard work. We've identified needs in the industry for our clients, whether that be a certain type of loan product or a need for more inventory or a relationship with an insurance provider or a product that was not available, even something that was, you know, adjacent to the real estate industry. And ultimately that's that's why we're here now is because we've done that. We've stepped We've walked every step of the way through through that. We've mm-hmm. acquired land. We've lost money on flips. <laughs> we've, you know, we've had to evict tenants that were in properties that we acquired. We have had to, we've dealt with having to get Florida Fish and Wildlife out to properties to remove protected species. Every single weird niche nuanced thing we've done it and we've been there and that's ultimately why we are here today and why we founded trx and why trx is what it is and why we do what we do is because we um we've been there well Brittany, uh thank you so much for being with us today thank you for sharing uh your insights and knowledge uh it's been a pleasure having you thank you so much i appreciate the time Enlightened investors, wait, wait, don't go just yet. I just want to remind you about our recently launched webinar that you will not want to miss. If you're at all curious and would like to learn more about how real estate investing can diversify your investment portfolio, alleviate the anxiety associated with Wall Street swings, leverage your 401ks and IRAs to substantially increase the return on your investment, and do all of this with turnkey, hands-off, passive real estate investments, then you'll want to immediately go to stetalker.com forward slash webinar. In the webinar, we'll also address the common dubious investment schemes that you want to avoid. To access the webinar, go to stetalker.com forward slash webinar. I look forward to seeing you in the webinar. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Investing Abundance brought to you by Steed Talker Capital a company working for passionate professionals like you to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steve Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steve Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. For resources to develop your financial independence, connect with us at stevetalker.com.